my name is Tom Peterson. I'm from Intel Corporation. What we're going to talk about, uh, the title of this uh, was Centrino, the best just got better. We just introduced the Centrino 2 platform. So what we're going to do is tell you the differences between Centrino and Centrino 2. Centrino is not a processor. Okay? It's a processor technology. In order to get that badge, it has to have three different things. It has to have an Intel processor. It has to have an Intel chipset. And it also has an Intel radio wireless. It has to be from Intel. You get more done in less time and using less energy. If we wind up where we have better battery life. 802.n, we wind up where that's faster and a larger range than we had before with G or A or B. And we have uh, advantage in the, the radio also. You have a Core 2 Duo family of processors, which is the heart of it. We wind up where we have also the chipset, is our 4 series, 48, 46, are the processor or the chipset uh, designations. And the, the newer, more powerful uh, Wi-Fi. A couple things that make the processor more powerful. We have a faster front side bus. Okay, we were at uh, 800, now we're up at uh, 1066 for a front side bus. The front side bus is the highway that everything travels on. The route between the memory and the processor, the processor and the video, things like that. The faster that is, the faster the machine will run. And now we have six megabytes of L2 cache. 50% faster when we're multitasking. Multitasking is one way to use multiple core machines. Okay, multitasking means you're running more than one application at a time. 90% faster performance compressing high definition videos. Better battery life. Okay, now the latest processors are 25 watts. They have been 35 watts. The easiest way to tell which one is which if it has a T in the beginning of the processor number sequence, that would be a 35 watt part. And if it has a P, that's a 25 watt part. Quick start. Okay, quick start is not what you think it might be. What happens with quick start, the notice is you're doing a very light application such as typing, it turns the processor off between keystrokes. Saves that much battery life. You have new materials that we're using in order to do this low leakage thing. What that does for, it, for us is it eliminates a lot of the leakage that you would get in the electrical components. Okay, if your leakage winds up being heat, if you can eliminate the leakage, you wind up where you eliminate the heat, another way to get better battery life. There's a test over there, 3D Park, comparing the older chipset to the newer chipset, winds up where you have almost twice the performance, 1.8 times. The chipset tells you what kind of memory you can have, how much memory you can have, what kind of devices you can attach, what kind of uh, video, for instance, you can run, things like that. All of that is contained in the chipset. We have DX10 support. If you're a gamer, that's important to you because you're going to have more realistic games. If you're a business person, it's important because if you're doing simulations, you wind up where you're going to be able to do it faster. We now use either DDR2 or DDR3 memory. Okay, DDR3, the big advantage of it right now is it uses less energy. Low power consumption, power management features. What we do is we turn off portions of the processor when they're not active. In the olden days, what would happen is uh, it would sit there and go around and say, is there a printer? Is there a printer? Is there a printer? And keep on looking for the printer forever. Okay, now the newer technology winds up where it says, is there a printer? Is there a printer? Oh, there's no printer here turns off that portion of the process. One of the things you can do with the dual core processors that we have today, if you're running a single, single threaded application, okay, single threaded means the, uh, the code just goes straight down and uh, it doesn't branch off uh, into separate threads where they tie everything back together at the end. Uh, it's not that it has into branches, but uh, it's gotta go in a sequence. One entire processor core will shut down. In addition, to give you a better performance, the processor core that's still on gets a speed bump. The Centrino 2 have a support for Blu-ray, so therefore you can watch your high-def movies. You wind up where it's now stutter-free, you don't have to worry about it breaking down. Wireless N winds up where, compared to wireless G, which is another standard, N winds up where it's about five times faster. <coughs> you also wind up where you have the coverage area is twice as much as it was before. Friendly neighbor uh, assurance, it winds up where 
uh, if you run a wireless system and it's been a reasonably powerful system, you might have your neighbors sitting there going, hey, do you have your wireless on? My TV screwed up. Now we have some technology in there, so it's not going to mess with the neighbor's uh, electronic components. Lines up where it's now A, B, D, N, N available. So wherever you are, whatever kind of hot spot you're in, it lines up where you should be able to connect. Coming next is something called WiMAX. What you'll be able to do is if you live in a nice small town, you'll be able to uh, have one <coughs> antenna sending out a signal from the steeple of the church in the middle of town, and everybody in town will be able to access that. This is another benchmark. There's performance, and here's battery life in minutes. Okay, here's the, uh, the oldest model. Okay, it uses 56 watt hours, it gets 233 minutes. Core 2 Duo lines up where it gets 56 watt hours and 277 minutes. You get a better amount of minutes. And here, we use 56 watts per hour, uh, watt hours, and we get a 291. Energy efficiency, we go for a uh, Intel Celeron processor versus a uh, Pentium dual core processor versus a Core 2 Duo. You can see that we wind up where we get uh, better use of the electricity. Thank you very much for coming.